Oh my, look at all these records. Ernest Tubb, oh my god. Oh my god, is that autographed by Ernest Tubb? I believe it is. All right, looks like today is the day. It's Wednesday, February 2nd, I do believe, in New York, Nebraska, at the Marble Museum. And it says like Antique Mall and Flea Market. I've never been in here. And it looks like it's open, so let's go see if we can find some cool vintage vinyl records. How are you? Good, how are you doing? These are a few I pulled out already. Hello YouTube, vinyl community, vinyl record collecting enthusiasts, thanks all of you for tuning in. What I do in these videos is I take you on every one of my record hunting adventures. Every time I go into any thrift stores or antique stores or flea markets or garage sales or anything looking for records, I take you right there with me. I'm holding the camera right there, digging through the records so you can see me digging through the records and you are right there as I find the records. I have that. I can't remember if I... I want to say I only have the cover. You know, there's a certain thrill that you get finding a record in the wild like that. You know, like at a record store, you expect to find records there because that's what they sell, you know. But when you find something very cool at a thrift store or an antique store, there's just sort of like a unique feeling that you get from that that you don't get finding them in any other sort of way. If you're digging these videos, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of the other videos. It doesn't cost a thing. I do all this for free. And don't forget to give a thumbs up on this video as well. Thank you. 
And I can get a hold of them. I mean, this is the other cell phone I need, so <laughs> easy to talk to. Uh, Mid American Structures. You can use that print right on. That'd be 402 414. I am in New York at the Marble Museum. They are out of the free Auburn area, I think we just left out of town. Um, the owner is Wendell Yoder. My knees is killing me. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm afraid I might not be able to get back up. You might have to call me a tow truck when I'm done looking. Yeah. <laughs> 
radio callers for that, man. <laughs> right. Right. For some old brass backs turn here, maybe. Dream up. All right, it is February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. By the time you see this video, though, this will actually be weeks later. Um, but yeah, if this place looks familiar, it's because it is Groundhog's Day. We are reliving it over and over again. We're hoping to go in and relive the big mega score 
the huge mega haul I had here a while back. So uh, let's go on in and see if we can find some cool vinyl records. Oh my, look at all these records. These were not here before. We got our work cut out for us. Looks like lots of classic country so far. All right, we got our work cut out for us. At a glance, the ones I could see did not look good. They just looked like standard classic country, which there's nothing wrong with classic country. I've just got more classic country than I know what to do with. I got hundreds of classic country records. And I just tell myself, no more classic country. Okay, a lot of these are ones that I've already seen here. Too old timey, I don't know. And Crosby. Polka. I don't know if you get lots of polka where you're at. There are tons and tons of polka records here in the Omaha, Nebraska area. Mambo in Havana, it's very seam split. Banjos in hi fi. Records are $2 here, by the way. on gold vinyl too. I'll look here in a minute. too. I see lots of them. I just gotta tell myself no more Hawaiian records. These boxes, jewelries. before you see this video I've got weeks and weeks worth of video shot already um, as far as these um, thrift with me videos go I've actually only got one's been uploaded and is live now and one is one is edited 
and uploaded, but it's scheduled to go live in a couple days. And that's all that I've got edited as far as these Thrift With Me videos go. Um, and, you know, I'm still new to these Thrift With Me videos. But, um, once I get, get more edited, it's really the, ed once I get some edited, more of them edited, I'll get better at filming them, knowing exactly, because I, you know, <laughs> once I start editing, then I realize things that I forgot to do and such. So once I get more of them under my belt, oh, I'm a family, second album, I got the first album. Didn't even know there was such thing. Get a look at that. Yeah, but I guess my point is, oh, there's some less Baxters. Too bad that is so beat. And they want three dollars for that thing. Oh my god. But anyway, my point is, uh, once I get more of these videos edited under my belt, I'll be better at filming them. There's little Marcy. There's for Pilmer. Let's see if there's anything. Hold on, let me finish flipping through these real quick. Gail and Ezra, a uh, Mercy knockoff. Jam and Tammy. Now, some of these I'd seen before. This, I believe those are already here. Maybe this Marcy was too. Want to look at these song titles on the Marcy? Very badly seen split. Three boys in a furnace. Weird. Jesus helps some fishermen. Wow, well, weird. Three boys in a furnace. It's sort of twisted shit. family they want three dollars for I don't know if that's three dollars worth for me I got more Dean Martin than I know what to do with oh, I got that Chet Atkins I got tons of Chet Atkins records That's, I can get that and put that in my is this racist section three dollars so is that inappropriate or what
That's Tennessee Young Ford. I like his, um, this is regular country stuff. Not really a big fan of the gospel stuff, but. I like some gospel music. Johnny Cash gospel music, I know I definitely like. I've had a CD of that that I liked. But I also like black metal. <laughs> All right, 78s, boy. Um, yeah, this is coming hot off the big 78 score. Day or two ago, got all those um, promo radio station 78s, Hank Williams and such. Lee Herman. These are like kind of big. Ba oh, the Three Sons. Ivory Joe Hunter. Was it again? Oh yeah, Ernest Tub autograph. That is freaking amazing. Okay, so box sets. I almost never want any of those. There are a couple. I've got about ten or so that are actually of interest to me. Wills. I know, I tell myself no more country, but then I run into something like that. Look at that. Willie Nelson, Ray Price. I got so much Willie Nelson, and that's three dollars. I don't really want to do the three dollars. Hopefully, you guys can see this all right. This whole setup here that they got is not working and it's going to collapse. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how I can even look at these. Maybe I'll start this end. Start standing them up. That'll work. Okay. Great living room. Yeah, paneling. Mal Tillis. Alright, Mal Tillis. Is this going to be all country or what? Almost looks like, uh, kind of looks a little bit like Pantera. What's her name? Rusty. Kind of looks like her. 
Jim Reeves. Pat Ben and Bobby Dolls. Hank Lachlan. Ted Weems in his orchestra. Oh, I see Roger Miller. I got this one. I think I got two or three different versions of this record. I'm going to look and just make sure that that's a stereo version. Make sure, like, for some reason I don't have a stereo version, you know, I'll get it. But if not, I already got it. You guys know about me and my giant Roger Miller collection. Pocas and Lawrence Welks. Stafford Brothers. Look into them. Same goes for eight tracks in the eighties. There's some eight tracks in the eighties that are worth a ton of money because they uh, the only way um, you can get eight tracks for a while was through uh, like Columbia Record House. The record clubs. And some of those records, 80s, even into the mid to later 80s, especially. Every time I see Kate Smith, I think of Mrs. Miller. That is, she's got the voice of an angel. More classic country, Buck Owens. I got tons of Buck Owens, though. More Buck Owens. A couple of Boots Randolphs. I got, I got tons of that. Uh, everything's wanting to collapse on me. more Hawaiian records. I'm going to look into that one. Caro Ballou. He needed the money. Oh my God. And, uh, I was just showing my Richard Pryor records. Oh no, that's not who I'm thinking. Maybe. Let me see if this guy's a sleeve. Okay, this is just a standard. It's a Mercury. No dirty stuff on here, like uh, like on the sleeve for uh, Richard Pryor. Who am I thinking of that was on the Richard Pryor sleeve? So anyway, this record, they want $3 for it. Someone thinks this record is better. 
but um, yeah, it's too beat up. Sorry, I'm having a hard time here. Everything's falling apart on me. Let me try and reposition here. Ray Price, Statler Brothers, Glenn Cable, Julio Iglesias, Julio Iglesias, Ray Price, The Bobby Lloyd Show. I love this record. Love this record. If you guys ever find this for a dollar, pick it up. Two dollars, three dollars even. It's such a good album. Gunfighter Balance, Marty Robbins. I also got more Gunfighter Ballads. Jim Reeves. Jim Reeves. right here in the school desk. Look these over. Alright, so I just started looking this up. I see this a lot in Hawaiian records. There's like 43 different versions of this and there's many different artists, like they're made up artist names, many different album titles, but it's all the same songs on them and stuff. And I've already got at least one version of it. I think I got more than one. I actually stopped looking because I didn't get moving here, but I don't know. My Discogs says I don't have this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do. I'm going to get it just in case. There's one of these for sale on Discogs for $40. Did you? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look and see if there's a proper dot sleeve over there for it. And I could not find a dot sleeve. I don't know if there even is such a thing. Uh, but yeah, just confirm Orion, just as I suspected, as a gold vinyl. I don't know if all this stuff is on gold vinyl. Everything that I've seen is though. Come on. Well, that was a very small but powerful haul that I got the Salvation Army, Council Bluffs. Didn't relive the size of the mega haul, you know, Groundhog's Day. Didn't do the re relive the size of the giant mega haul, but it was a uh, small but powerful haul I got there. Got a freaking Ernest Tubb autograph. In fact, she only, the, uh, records were marked a dollar ninety-seven. She charged me ninety-five cents each for them. Got five records. Ernest Tubb autograph. Um, that uh, Ivory, whatever his name is. One was for sale on eBay for or on Discogs for forty dollars. I don't know if it's worth that or not, but uh, <laughs> O'Brien gold vinyl. Roger Miller and something else, but yeah, glad I stopped here. All right, it is still February 2nd, Groundhog Day. I was just in this thrift world, but I was driving by it anyway. I was just up the street from uh, Salvation Army I was at. I was driving right by it, so I figured, what the hell, I'm just going to run in, just check to see if there's any records and run back out. All right, this scene should look familiar to you guys by now. Is that sealed? Dollar ninety eight. You guys have any idea what that is? Twenty 
2020. I mean, I'll be looking that up. Seems like a no-brainer though to me. I think this is all the same sort of crap I already seen. All right, let me look that up. All right, let's take a look at the records we found. Finally made it into the Marble Museum. Found a little stack of records there. We'll start with this one, the Le Legardi Twins. Tom and Ted, I guess are their names. In the 1950s, they were known as Australia's yodeling stockmen. Don't know what stockmen are. But in 1967, Tom and Ted, the twins, had a role on Star Trek. There's them right there. I'll let you guys get a good look at them if you want to guess what episode they were in. And look at that. It was autographed also. And the autograph says, 2D, all our love from Lagarde twins, Ted and Tom, XOX. And it's funny because it looks like it's just signed by, by one of them and it's signed for both of them. It's like one twin is as good as both, I guess. But anyway, the Star Trek episode they were on is I Mud. Pretty cool. Next. We got, let's see how I can get this uh, glare. We got Hal Mooney. Anytime. Selections from around the musical horoscope from 1959. Let's take care of this first. This bag is ugly. It is not helping one bit. You guys know me. I think I could just slide this one off of here maybe. Maybe not. There we go. Now it's looking perfect. Oh, except for this little guy hanging on here. Oh, there's a piece of tape on it. Yeah, Hal Mooney, anytime. Um, selections from around the musical horoscope from 1959. I did listen to some of this, and it is super epic. This was actually released um, as musical horoscope in 1957. You can see the track listing there. It's actually just the all the different signs of the Zodiac. I, I listened to a couple, including my sign, Scorpio, and it was actually very cool. Pleasantly surprised. It was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Got uh, Dick Shorey's Stereo Action Goes Broadway. I already got this one, but um, this one was in nice condition, so I picked it up. They come in these boxes, you know, it's like a slip case like this. See how the insert goes in that window there. Pretty cool. Yeah, I love these stereo action records. Uh, man, I've got probably about 20 of them. I've got to be getting close to having all of them. I'm not sure how many there are. Uh, that's from 1961. Um, and I'm a completist. I'm trying to get all these stereo action records. And I did discover there's a couple more versions of this record that I want to get. I'm still looking for the, this is the 1961 gold cover. I'm still looking for the 1968 white cover of this. But also there's a 1970 UK release of this that has a completely different cover. And it's just a lady standing there with a boob out for no reason. So yeah, I got to have that. All right. Here's a good one here. Crown Records, Twangy Guitars by Billy Boyd from 1960. Got that great colorful stereo logo and the colorful Crown Records logo on there. Budget label. Normally I don't look up the, um, when I'm doing my half-baked research, you know, I don't really look up the labels, but something just drew me to it. I went and looked up Crown Records. It was well worth the research. It says Crown Records was a budget label from 1953 to 1969. This uh, I got all this info off of Discogs, by the way. They earned the reputation of king of the junk record labels. What Crown had to offer was musical junk food on plastic plates, i.e. cut-rate children's, classical, Broadway, sound alike pop and R&B. The covers fell apart. Almost instantly, <laughs> which mine 
It's like very hard to find any of these records that aren't seam split. Mine's seam split here. The LPs were shipped with no inner sleeve, thus splitting the covers. They're cheaply made records. They sounded worn right out of the package. Uh, I listened to this one. I wouldn't say it sounded worn, but it did sound like cheaply recorded. But it was really cool though, man. I dug this album actually. And like even brand new, noise can be heard and bumps can be seen on most of the Crown LPs. In fact, I looked at mine and there are tiny little minute bumps on the record. So there we go, Crown Records. Then got a Phase 4 Stereo, Edmundo Ross, Edmundo Ross, something, I don't know how you pronounce it, 1961, Space Age, Latin, and Exotica. You know, this was recorded with, you know, very high-tech methods for the day. A lot like Command Records were. In fact, they got all the, they got all this, um, technical data inside here explaining how they actually recorded the albums. Alright, I'm a big Simon and Garfunkel fan. So I had to get this, Living Brass, The Graduate, and other Simon and Garfunkel hits from 1969. Very, very elevator music versions of these songs. Cool old price sticker on it. $1.99. And I found this Terry Snyder Footlight Percussion Hit Selections of the Great White Way with a bongo beat. <laughs> I got so many questions here. Okay, first of all, what is Footlight? What is the Great White Way? Is that racist? Did I, I hope I didn't buy some. So I looked it up. I had to look it up. By the way, this is uh, Space Age Bachelor Pad music. Um, Footlight is actually like, um, you know, like a Broadway um, stage light that goes on the front edge of the stage, pointing back at you. And the Great White Way is a nickname for Broadway. Wall-to-wall -wall stereo. Gatefold. This one I already had. I'm not sure. Actually, I still haven't dug this one out yet. I think I might only have the cover for this. So now I'm glad to finally have it complete. TV Jazz Themes by Video All Stars. And look at how ugly, dingy gray this bag is. There's no hype stickers on it. So you know me, this thing has to go. Look at how crisp and beautiful that looks now. And I'm going to put this in a brand new shiny clear bag so you can see it in all its glory. TV Jazz Themes. Peter Gunn, Sunset Strip, The Thin Man, Richard Diamond. Very cool. That's from uh, 1958, Space Age, and Spy Jazz, Crime Jazz, that sort of thing. 1957, Pete Rugolo, An Adventure in Sound, Brass and Hi-Fi from 1957, Mono, Space Age. This is actually much better than I thought it would be, too. I thought this was going to be a little too big bandy. You know, if it starts getting a little too old sounding, um, I lose interest in it. Because it's described on Discogs as big band, and, you know, it, scares me but it was it was actually much more space age and pretty weird it was pretty unusual so uh, yeah I was really digging this I got a bunch of his other records too all right that was it for the Marble Museum in York Nebraska by the way this all occurred on Groundhog's Day February 2nd um, that evening after work, I stopped at the Salvation Army in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Found several records. Got this Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys. Uh, the King of Western Swing. This is a 1973 record. Got another copy of this Roger Miller, A Tender Look at Love. I've actually got, um, I have this, plus I have another version of it with a different cover on it. This is from 1968, if I didn't say that. And you know, this ugly shrink has got to go. There we go. Crisp and clean and beautiful looking now. 
Roger Miller, one of my favorites. In fact, there, wearing a shirt right now, coincidentally. All right, then I found this Ivory Joe Hunter, 10 inch, 78, Blues at Sunrise. And You Taught Me to Love from 1951. This is a Blues, 10 inch, 78 RPM. Very cool. I always get a kick out of Orion. Orion Country, 1980 Sun Records. Uh, his voice sounds like Elvis, which uh, him and the record company kind of, you know, played on that and um, and led people to believe that um, they were Elvis songs or even people were believing that Elvis didn't die and he actually recorded these songs. So that's pretty interesting. And then the really big score, Salvation Army Council Bluffs, was the Ernest Tubb Golden Favorites autograph there to Ben, Ben or Bev. This is a 1973 record. Of course, Ernest Tubb and his Texas Troubadours, he's a early pioneer of country music. His biggest hit, 1941's Walking the Floor Over You, uh, marked the rise of honky-tonk music. Yeah, I was super excited to find an autographed record of such a legend as Ernest Tubb. You know, he had the um, Ernest Tubb record store also. I want to say he had, um, he had one in... Uh, Texas, maybe, but also there's one, uh, the existing one is in Nashville, and they're like fighting to keep it. Oh my god, <laughs> what is going on here? Okay, so I just noticed as I'm doing this, there's stuff sticking out here. We got some stuff inside here. Oh, that's right, I did see this. Is that it? Yeah, record. Yeah, this must have been, they did a show together. Lane Brody. They must have done a show together from whenever this is, whatever year this would be. Bev. Bev or Ben. Best of health and happiness. And yeah, let's see, 1982. I know somewhere in here there's a mention of that show. So yeah, pretty cool. Like archaeological stuff you find inside of records every once in a while. I found lots of cool stuff inside of records before. I got I found a Dean Martin autographed eight by ten photo inside of a Dean Martin record that I bought at a thrift store for a dollar. Uh, all sorts of other things. Hell, I've even opened up gatefolds. And inside the gatefold, there's crumbs of weed inside there and seeds. <laughs> A couple times, actually. All right. Then, after going to Salvation Army in Council Bluffs, I went up the street to the Thrift World in Council Bluffs. And found this brand new, still sealed, Jeremiah Freed 2021 record. It says it's alt indie rock. Um, this is definitely going to go in the uh, our for sale pile because I could just tell by looking at that it's not something I'm going to dig, but somebody must. So um, yeah, pretty cool to find that for dollar ninety eight. All right, and if you are digging these thrift with me videos, make sure you check out this playlist right here so you can binge watch all the uh, thrift with me videos that I've made so far. Thanks everyone for watching and I will see you on the next one.